So, the question now we want to ask is now independence means that the conditional probability of a event E happening conditioned on the occurrence of F is equal to the unconditional probability of an event happening. Recall this says that E conditioned on the occurrence of F. So, the qu natural question to ask is what would happen with if E is conditioned on occurrence of F is does not affect the un unconditional probability of E then what can you say about the probability of this event happening on the non occurrence of this event F. Recall F is occurrence of event F. So, F complement is non occurrence of event F. F is the occurrence of event F and F complement is the non occurrence of event F. So, the question we are asking is if a event is conditioned on the occurrence of the event F and uh, this is the event E conditioned on the non occurrence of event F. So, the question that is being asked is if E and F are independent can I say that E and F complement are also independent that is the question. In other words if the occurrence of E is independent of the occurrence of F can I say that the occurrence of E is independent of the non occurrence of F also. So, that is the question that is being asked and the proposition is if E and F are independent then so are E and F complement. So, this requires a very simple proof. So, we can see that E and F are let us assume E and F are independent. So, if E and F are independent we have seen that probability of E intersection F is probability of E into probability of F. Okay. So, that is what we can see. So, now you can look at this Venn diagram this green area is my E intersection F. I can write the pink area as E intersection F complement. So, that I can write my E as E intersection F union E intersection F complement. Notice that E intersection F and E intersection F complement are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Now, once I write E as E intersection F and E intersection F complement, I can apply my addition law to the disjoint sets to get probability of E is probability of E intersection F plus probability of E intersection F complement. Now, I apply E intersection F, I apply my multiplication rule for independent events. Probability of E intersection F is probability of E into probability of F. I want to, I retain probability of E intersection F complement the same way. Now, I take this term to my left hand side, I have probability of E minus probability of E into probability of F equal to probability of E intersection F complement. Hence, I can write probability of E intersection F complement is probability of E into 1 minus probability of F. We know 1 minus probability of F is probability of F complement and hence, I get probability of E intersection F complement is probability of E into probability of F complement and this tells me that E and F complement are independent. So, we can see that if E and F are independent, so are E and F complement. Okay. So, this is the proof which we have, we have just discussed we have E intersection F complement is probability of E into probability of F complement. So, 
what this entails is the probability of E's occurrence is unchanged by the information as to whether F has occurred or F has not occurred. So, probability of E conditioned on F or probability E conditioned on F complement whether F has occurred or F has not occurred. If E and F are independent, the probability of E's occurrence is unchanged. That is what this means. So, now we said that independence of three or more events is slightly more complicated than just discussing independence of two events. When we talked of independence of two events, we said that pro if I have two events probability of E and F, if pro probability of E is if the probability of uh, the intersection is equal to the product of probabilities, then I can say E and F are independent and the converse is also true that if E and F are independent, then the product uh, probability of the intersection is the product of the probabilities. This is what we have for two events. Now, suppose I have I want to extend this notion of multiplication or intersection of events to more than two events. So, let us uh, the question that is being asked is suppose E is independent of F given that E is independent of F. So, I know the probability of E intersection F is probability of E into probability of F this is what is given to us. E is also independent of G. So, I have probability of E intersection G is probability of E into probability of G. Then the question we are asking is, is E necessarily independent of F intersection G? So, I am asking if E intersection F intersection G is equal to probability of E into probability of f intersection g this is the question we are asking. So, let us look at it. So, this is an intersection E intersection f intersection g this is the question we are asking and we answer this question through a example. We are not going into the detailed mathematical implication here, but we would like to establish the multiplication rule for more than one three events through an example. So, now let us recall this example. I roll two fair dice. You also recall that we defined an event E. Now, let me define the event E is sum of 7 in the independent throw. So, I am rolling a die twice and we saw that this sum of 7 probability of E was 1 by 6. This is something which we saw. I had 6 out of 36 which is equal to 1 by 6. In other terms, we saw that with getting a sum of 7 is actually independent of whether your first throw was a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6. The sum of 7 is independent of what your first throw was. I can use a similar logic to say that a sum of 7 is independent of what my second throw is also. So, if I define my events in the following way, E is the event that the sum of dice is equal to 7, we know probability of E is 1 by 6. Let me define F to be the event that the first dice equals of 4. Again, probability of E is 1 by 6, probability of F is again 1 first, first dice is equal to 4 or the first outcome is a 4 again this is a 1 by 6. The G is the event that the second dice equals a 3. So, probability of E is 1 by 6, probability of F is 1 by 6, probability of G is 1 by 6. I know that E and F are independent because the sum is equal to 7 is independent of what was your first choice. The sum it is equal to 7 is similarly independent of what is your second choice. So, E 
and f are independent similarly e and g are also independent now let us look at what is the event f intersection g so now if i have defined all these events the event f intersection g is the event of getting a 4 in your first throw and a 3 in the second throw so the event f intersection g corresponds to the outcome 4 and 3 and i know that the probability of f intersection g is again 1 by 36 this is the probability of f intersection g now the question that is being asked is what is the chance of e happening given the event f intersection g has happened i know that if i know that this event f intersection g has happened that is the first throw is a 4 and second throw is a 7 a 3 i know that the chance of me getting a 7 is given f intersection g has happened is 1 given 4 and 3 has happened the sum equal to 7 is equal to 1 in other words probability of e conditioned on f intersection g is equal to 1 but i also know probability of e is 1 by 6 so we can see that the un conditional probability of e conditioned on this event f intersection g is not equal to the unconditional probability of e happening hence we can say that event e is not independent of event f intersection g so we have that even though i have e is intersection independent on f and e is independent of g we have a condition where e is not independent of f intersection g so this helps us actually come up with the rule for three events to be independent we are only stating the rule here explaining and proving it is beyond the scope of this course but i prove i state the independence of three events rule the following way three events are said to be independent if probability of the intersection equal to the product of the probabilities not only that i need to check the pairwise probabilities e intersection f is probability of e into f e intersection g is probability of e into probability of g probability of f intersection g is probability of f into probability of g if these four happen then i say pro the events e f and g are independent events so for independent events the probability that they all occur equals the probability of their individual probabilities and these probabilities which are looking at pairwise intersections that probability of pairwise intersection should be the product of the individual probabilities so let us look at an application of the multiplication rule for more than three events so a couple is planning on having three children assuming that each child is likely to be of either sex i am assuming female and male and the probability of female is equal equal to the probability of male equal to half that is what we mean by equally likely to be of either sex and that the sexes of the children are independent then find the probability that all the three children are girls now let us define the events the events are let us define e1 to be the event that the first child is a girl e2 is the event second child is a girl similarly e3 is the event third child is a girl now the probability 
Now the event that all three children are girls are is the intersection. The event that all three children are girls are the intersection of these three events and what we require to find is the probability of this intersection. So, applying our multiplication rule I know that probability if they are independent I know this is equal to probability of E 1 into probability of E 2 into probability of E 3. What is probability of E 1? I know probability of E 1 is equal to 1 by 2, probability of E 2 is also 1 by 2, probability of E 3 is also 1 by 2 giving me a probability of 1 by 8. So, I have that the event the probability of all girls are independent is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 equal to 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 8. So, what we have seen so far is we introduced that important notion of independent events. We looked at the independence of E and F and E and F complement namely the occurrence of event E given occurrence of event F and namely the independence of event E conditioned on occurrence of F independence of event E conditioned on non occurrence of event F and we also extended the notion of independence to more than 3 events.